make this a little fun enough for this piece of Got our meat and we're gonna eat good, y'all. We just uh, cleaned up our deer. I ended up getting the back straps out, the tenderloins, which is my favorite part. So we're gonna cook those up tonight with Stephanie. And the rest of the deer, I'm just gonna take and get done into hamburger meat. Me and Steph use a ton of the hamburger meat because you can just use it in lasagnas and different types of pasta and eat burgers a lot. And I just like to eat the patties by themselves. So we're gonna go take this to Eddie Ray's where I've gotten all my deer sausage done and they mix their, their meat with some brisket fat. And they actually are a, uh, like a barbecue place so they have leftover brisket and so it's just the perfect little touch on whitetail because whitetail don't have a lot of fat. All right y'all, we are here at Eddie Ray's right off 35. And we're gonna be taking home the loins and the back straps, and we're gonna be leaving some of the uh, brisket meat, the neck, the leg, some of that stuff with them, and they're gonna make some delicious hamburger meat. We'll take it on in, and then we'll take the steaks and the loins back with us. We are left with just the nectar, nectar of nature. The amazing back strap. We're all familiar with that one. Sometimes this gets looked over right here. This is a tenderloin. There's two of them. It's basically on the back, the hamstring area. Um, but you, you can even tell when you are cutting this out, it is just a very tender piece of meat and it is my favorite piece of meat on the deer. So I usually eat those first as a special treat as a hunter. You get to enjoy that. And we're gonna take these loins and cook them up tonight with Stephanie because it's just a, a special treat. I feel blessed that we actually got to recover the deer. I didn't make the greatest shot. It wasn't terrible, but having that deer duck and then arrow goes into no man's land and then goes away and you just feel terrible. I mean, it's it sucks. So I'm glad that we have recovered the meat and we get to enjoy nature's goodness. What do you think, Emmy? You wanna try some tender loins tonight? Mmm. Mm. A special tasty treat. What do you think? That means daddy got a deer. <laughs> daddy did get a deer. Put your we hands in the deer air. In here. We're gonna pick up the loins tonight, babe. <gasps> and we got that Eddie Hi. Ray's making that. That delicious deer burger, 70-30 brisket mm. mix, yes. Let's fire up the grill and let's go. Do you have any special recipes for tenderloins? For tenderloins? Mm. How about some of those carrots on the side? Okay. Or some mashed taters. I did have something planned over here, but... That looks too Italian. Too Italian. Let's go American style, white tail. Okay, Come let's completely switch gears here and <laughs> get some carrots. <laughs> Sorry, you want dad to hold you? Somebody's very emotional today. You want dad to hold, I mean, dad's dirty. Dad still has deer blood on his hands. Yeah, that's daddy's boat. Speaking of that, y'all, no, I'm not gonna tell you. Now they wanna know. I know, but I gotta save it for the surprise. You guys gotta see her acorn collection game. It is strong. Uh, she loves pots, she loves bowls. She loves putting things in them. She is a collector, a harvester, and she's collected all of the acorns off the deck here. She'll probably put some more in, in that bowl that we just gave her. Okay, Amy, unfortunately I have to take this bowl because we are gonna put some deer meat in there. Yum yum, yum yum for dinner. So while we're waiting for the grill to get hot, what I'm doing here is I'm just taking the back straps this is what we're gonna have later my dear Ooh. steaks and I'm taking uh, a lot of the sinew off which is a uh, it's called silver skin and other names but um, that stuff is really tough I mean it is hard to chew through it's actually so tough that people used to use it to make bowstrings out of they like twist it up and make bowstrings and some people still do so I'm just going to clean these up a little bit while 
we're waiting and then we're gonna get to the goods that have no sinew whatsoever. The tender loins. Get a little bit of this fat off. What did you think of the first time you ate whitetail, honey? That was a little while ago since I've known you. We've had like good and bad ones. We it have. really depends on the animal. It depends on the circumstances, how they Die. end up leaving this world, which this one right here probably is tensed up. I think the first time I had deer was when we were dating and you, we were like- I had a lot back, of deer, yeah. Yeah, we live in two different cities. And like one of our first dating meals you made, um, I'm pretty sure you made like backstrap or something. Yeah, it was little backstraps mm -hmm. that we marinated and then we had mushrooms. Yeah, I was gonna say we had mushrooms that I actually made, what, last night? Yes, Two nights you ago. did. Good. I think I even Instagrammed that meal. Back before Instagram was even that cool. <laughs> was Instagram even around back then? I, I think it was, it was on its first legs. That's what we end up with right there, backstraps versus the tenderloins. Backstraps got more meat on them. Tenderloins, more tender. There's our loins, loin, loins. The fruit of our loins Gordon. is right there. <laughs> but the actual loins are right here. Already put some olive oil on there, and what seasoning are we gonna pop on there, honey? Uh, just like steak, general yeah, steak seasoning. Yeah, just a general grilling blend, steak and chop. It doesn't have salt in it, so I'm gonna add a little bit of salt. How much? It's swirly. Swirly. Swirly, twirly tenderloins here. The traditional Carrots maple glazed carrots. Oh yeah, baby. And on the cooking of the tenderloins, on my end, I have a big green egg, and that's normally what I cook on. It takes a while to heat up, but it just it cooks the meat really well. I like to get it to about 400 when I'm cooking just about any kind of steak. Like if it's a thicker steak, maybe about 500, but on this tenderloin, I put it about 450. Let it go for three or four minutes on each side. Just pss, ah, pss. And then I'll shut the grill off and I'll leave it in there for an additional um, three or four minutes, whatever it is. Some steaks, it's like five, six, just depending on the cut, like the elk steaks I did the other day, um, it was five or six minutes. And then I take them out and I put them in that tin foil. So they're still cooking. The microwave's not on, sorry. We are not using the microwave to cook. That would be just, come on now. But inside of the tin foil there is the tenderloins. So they're continuing to cook in the juices. If you're cooking a really big piece of meat, you can take it off there and then just put it in a cooler and uh, let the juices like soak in and cook even more for like 30 minutes to an hour. So we're gonna see how a stressed whitetail doe tenderloin taste because she laid up all night. She had a quarter of an arrow just above her shoulder blades. I'm sure, you know, there was some stress going on. We all know about that. Time to finish the plate. I've let them sit in the tin foil for about 10 minutes. They're still steaming. It's still steaming. Take one out here. We're just gonna cut on in. Oh yeah, juicy. Man, I wasn't quite sure. I didn't know if they cooked enough, but that is perfect right there. So there you go, my deer. Mm. There's your tenderloin. Thank you. From Whitetail Deer, harvested semi last night, kind of this morning, but we got it done. Let's do it. Let us know what you think, hon. It's 
chewy. Is it? A little bit, but it's not bad. It's chewy. I think huh? I would have expected it to be a little bit more chewy, um, but it is a little chewy. Okay. Stressed. Mm hmm. Let's try this one. <laughs> yeah, it's a little chewy. Wow. I'm trying to figure out what the formula is to get a really tender deer because I've had some that are great. Wow, you're really working on that cutting. The meat's good, but it's chewy, y'all. It's chewy, and that's supposed to be not chewy. That's supposed to be the tenderloin, the tenderest part. Well, y'all, it was pretty good, but it wasn't the best that it could be. I want to try something. I want, I want to try aging that meat for a little while, kind of like I do with fish. I let them sit um, for like a day or at least overnight on ice. I have the opportunity. I'm coming up on a, another hunt really soon that I'm going to be hunting a place that has a walk-in freezer. And I've already asked um, the gentleman if I can let my deer hang in there for an extended period of time like three to five days and then come back and really see how that makes a difference in processing the meat, how it's gonna look, how it's gonna taste, everything. I wanna walk you guys through that because this one was like complete opposite. This deer was alive and kicking like six hours ago. So I think that plays a role, but I am glad that we got to recover the deer and I got to spend some time with my boys, Outlaw and Mullet Man. Their channels are gonna be linked down below as well. They're continuing to hunt um, while I'm going on another hunt in another state. Uh, so you guys can go follow them. And if you want to stay tuned for all the hunting this season, you know what to do. Just go ahead and subscribe right here to the channel. Hit the ding dongs for all the notifications. And I got another surprise with the boat really soon. So y'all keep it locked right here. God bless you and I'll see you on the next one.